and welcome to Tunks and Tales. My name is Mackenzie Cadman and here we are previewing the William Hill World Darts Championship on our preview show, Road to the Palace. I'm joined by the man himself, Mace the Ace, Chris Mason. Welcome to the show. Well, it was a legend in rehearsal, but I suppose that I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, legend, mate. Legend, I'm good. Mate. So obviously we've previewed the, all the games for the work, for the first round of the World Championship and th there is going to be, well we think there's going to be some quite a few shocks. Um, talk us through again what you believe is going to happen and maybe your four from the bottom half of the bracket. Yeah, I think we might have some shocks in, in, in terms of players that we don't know a lot about but ultimately the, the, the usual suspects, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna find their way through. It's, it's almost impossible to not yeah. see Taylor in that last eight lineup. Um, alongside potentially Lewis, I think. Yeah. Uh, for me, he's one that's just—he's just looking like he might get on a run. And, he, and no disrespect to his section, but it looks winnable for him. Yeah. Uh, I think Gary Anderson comes from the, the real bottom half of that draw, um, and then the guy that always seems to do the business in the big events, Peter Wright. Yeah. Um, I think his game is just at a level where it's so solid now that he's just so reliable. Uh, I know he got beat uh, at the Players' Championships not too long ago, but again, that was a short race. It was just it was just one of them games, and he's going through that transition period where he looks or appears to be sticking to one set of darts. Yeah. I'm not quite sure or convinced that these were as good as the previous set. Yeah. Uh, I think the previous set he played at a much higher level with. He was much more consistent. I mean, he's still good with these. You know, this, you know it's not like he's averaging in the 80s or whatever. Um, and he only did just get nip 6-5 and he did have a dart at the ball after it in 180 to yeah. leave 1-2-1. One, so um, I'm not going to be too hard on him with that result. Um, but that's my that's my four from the bottom half. Having your pick your four, I picked my four from the top half. And to be honest, it was interesting to see how many players are actually inside that bracket that, you know what, if they really had a go, they can break through. Like you said, the obvious one is Marco Van Gogh and he's yeah. obviously going to break through his bracket and get to the quarterfinals. Um, another part of the bracket, what well, it took me... A couple of minutes to decide, really. You've got quite a tough section in terms of Rem van Barneveld, Chisnell, Kyle Anderson. For me, I think it's going to be difficult. I think Barney will beat Kyle Anderson, um, but that could be a shock. Yep, yep. But I also think if Chizzy plays the way he can play, then that part of the section is his because Barney's going to fall away if Chizzy bangs out the scores. And for me, I've gone with Barney just due to the fact the way Chizzy's playing at the moment. If he's dropping his shoulder on them throws, he might not be in the treble as much as he can, but he can do it. Yeah. So that section is really, really difficult to pick. On the other section, Mensa Sulovic has got a lovely, lovely selection in terms of the fact where he's got players that haven't done as much as he's done this year. The way he throws, his methodical, he's going to have the, the fans... And they'll be the ones fearing him, not the other way around. Exactly. He's playing, which was probably the other way around a few years Absolutely. ago for Mensa. He's got a lot of experience the way he's played lately. And I think he's a fan. He's becoming a fan favourite. That double fourteen is like <laughs> a palace for him. Yeah, um, he loves it. It's the size of a palace. It must look like the size of a palace. You, you don't miss it that much. No. I think the, his one forty scoring is is unbelievable, um, and that's what's winning in these games against the top players. Because he's an underrated one eighty scorer. Because when I mean, if you actually look at his stats, his one forty is a phenomenal. Yeah. So he gives himself so many opportunities mm. to hit those one eighties, and when that third dark is going in. He hits rakes of 180. It's he's, very underrated. He's big checkouts as well. Yeah. And like, he, he's one, even a 170, a 164, a 157. If that dart is in the 60 and it's followed by the second one, if if he leaves double 14, that's it, it's game over. Well, talking of finishes, another one of the guys you picked is equally as yeah. phenomenal on big score checkouts is, yeah. is Rob Cross. Yeah, I think Rob, for me, has been one of the most outstanding players I've seen in the last five to ten years, especially the fact where he's come in in January, just gone. He's come through the uh, Challenge Tour, he's come into the Pro Tour and he's played like a, a well-known worldwide professional, you know. Yeah. And the way the way he gets his throw is so strong and dynamic where, and sometimes if it does put come off the ball, he'll step back, compose himself, chill. And then you think, you know what's going in? There's so many times I've watched a stream with Dan Dawson and people commenting where they're like, well, what's he stopping for? This is not normal for players to stop in terms of rhythm. He's got quite a rhythm, yeah. rhythmic throw. But he'll compose himself if he's just wired it on the double four. And then you just know how many times he's gone bang, straight I in. think that's in testament to his action. You see, he relies on his action so much. A lot of players, if they tried that, they would mm. pull or push. You know, because they are they take, yeah. being taken out of their rhythm. But he gets, to, he gets to the end of his throws so well, that final bit yeah. uh, uh, and the end of that action it is pretty much perfect. So I'm pretty sure you'll see on the, on the graphic there, uh, our picks. 
which will be, uh, well, you can do your top half, I'll do my <laughs> bottom half. So my top half is MVG, Raymond Van Barneveld, Mensah Sulevich, and the man himself, Rob Cross. Yeah, and mine, in order, will be Peter Wright, Adrian Lewis, the old governor himself, Phil Taylor, and at the bottom, I think Gary Anderson will will just Sneak squeak through. squeak through and uh, what a quarter final lineup that of will course. be. I mean, uh, talking about the World Championship, we've just seen the Youth World Championship go on at the Players' Championship and what an outstanding game <laughs> that was. I mean, to say these lads are young lads, they're, they're, they're coming onto the Pro Tour, they're playing the European Tours as well. To, for them to actually demonstrate that standard of darts on a big stage in front of a lot of people at a night time, it was amazing. Yeah, that was a thing. I mean, it was a sold out night. There was five and a half thousand people there. <laughs> Uh, massive in terms of their future. Mm. Uh, again, a, a spot in the Grand Slam was up, ten grand, um, and that, and 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 the prestige of being crowned a world champion at yeah. a very young age. I mean, for a, as a player, in your, when you look at your future, that's almost though it's not like a a senior major. It's still a major, and it's something that you you know will never be forgotten. You will you will have that. That's gone down in history. Uh, he's a world youth champion. You know, it, that might have been a big weight off his shoulders for the rest of his career. I think he got £10,000, which isn't, you know, insane money when we look but at... But it's enough to keep yeah. him going, that's Yeah, it. I mean, it was a huge moment, and uh, and it was the way he did it. You know, he averaged over 100 throughout the match, yeah. finished with 100-plus average. Um, it wasn't like a best of three or a, you know, a, a one-leg shootout. This was a long match, which mm. the, the pros had been playing over, yeah. best of 11 in the first two rounds. You know, and there weren't many under plus averages in that. I think, for me, the, what surprised me the most watching it back was the fact that when Dimitri hit the, hit the double to win, there was no celebration. celebration. It no. was just like norm, like he plays that kind of darts all the time. And I think, like you mentioned earlier about his stable and Mac Elkin and the team yeah. they've got around him, they're so grounded yeah. and they all all love each other and respect each other and they're all looking after each other. And I think when he stepped on the planet stage, he had everyone behind him. Yes. He knew what he could do. He's played so well over the Pro Tour and the European Tour this year. And you know what? He just excelled himself and just uh, went and did and it. And his practice was meticulous. So obviously, yeah. where, where they where they practice is very close to our production office. Right. So I've seen him a few days in the afternoon, you know, uh, a few times in the afternoon while he was getting ready. And, you know, he, he, he was composed. Uh, and they were great friends as well. Yeah. You know, they're, they're great friends away from the hockey uh, and the stage. Um, but yeah, his composure throughout the whole thing uh, was phenomenal for a guy that is, is, I mean, although he has got some experience, you know, that's his first mm. major final, um, you know, and there was a lot on the line and, and, and all credit to him and all credit to Josh Payne. Exactly. I mean, he, he will go away and uh, regroup and he's, you know, they've both got their careers ahead of them and there's no, you know, there's, there's no shame in losing to the final and he, he almost pegged him back. Exactly. I, I was just about to say that. There's no, you can't take anything away from Josh Payne. The guy qualified for the match play um, last year and you know what? These young lads are coming through the rankings and they really are playing some decent darts and it's great to see. And they're fearless. That's yeah. the thing. They're absolutely fearless. Mm. Um, and we, well, we touched on the money. When we talk about money, look at the money on offer this year yeah. uh, at the World Championships. One point eight million pounds. One point eight million pounds in prize money. It's astounding. I think if it, I was just talking to you about there, in, if that was in your day and age, it'd be like dogs after the money. You know, yeah. you'd beat each other up on stage yeah, for yeah. it because like we had so many limited opportunities. Exactly. Uh, and I, I think sometimes when you look at the players, it's almost like they take it not for granted, but they do. It's the norm, though. It's now, the norm. Really? I mean, yeah. they are earning. Look at Rob Cross, two hundred thousand this year. First round losers this year will will trouser eleven thousand pounds. I only got ten thousand for making the semis of my world championship. That's crazy. Yeah, ten thousand pounds, and you know, do you think it's top heavy? Personally, I think it's very weighted towards the top ten players. You know, yeah. I think, but it's very difficult for the like. Let's let's bring it back, Steve Lennon. Yeah. That lad. Let's say he goes into the, the first round, breaks it into the second round. If he gets knocked out in the second round, the amount, the distance between the money he w he would win to say if he got to the quarter final or the semi final. Is very very. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's and a the, the rankings are based on prize money. So uh, when you get an event like this, is very top heavy. If they didn't have the amount of events like like it was in our time, the winner would be number one in the world yeah. for a year and wouldn't wouldn't have to throw by another dart. Yeah. yeah, but by too far. I mean, there is talk. Uh, I spoke to Barry, and you know, I remember him telling me it was going to be a million pound in prize yeah. money years ago, and he he did that in <laughs> double quick time. It's yeah. now one point eight million. Uh, there was talk by 2020 or the 2020 World Championships, yeah. the winner trousering a million pounds. See, Could you imagine that? For throwing darts. 
it's, it's, it's just it's, it's outstanding really I mean it's a shame Phil is retiring now because yeah. I, I bet he's thinking if I could have stayed around a couple more years I, I'd, I'd have a right yeah, I think, I think he's okay I mean he must be down to his last 10 million or so so I'm sure he's, <laughs> I'm sure he'll be alright but yeah it's um, yeah all, all credit to, to the PDC and Matchroom and uh, and all those people involved that have that have just turned the game around I mean I never ever thought you know, even even when I was involved in the PDC in the mid '90s, sort of, you know, I was playing PDC events in 1995. Mm -hmm. There was no way I ever thought that that one day we'd be, you know, seeing a never mind 400,000. You know, 400,000 in prize money would have been a great thing. Of course. You know, now the winner is going to try as a 400, you know, 400,000 on his own. It's. I think for me, it's a great benefit for these players like your Gurneys, like your Rob Cross, like your Steve Lennons, and your Mensas. If Mensas is going to stay around for for a little while. The, the, you can win so much money, and this can set them up for life. You know, yeah. it, 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 it's life changing. It really is. This sport is now growing into into where it can change people's lives in months. Yeah. If you win three to four, Johnny Clayton at the Players Championships, you, you know, forty thousand pound can genuinely look at twenty eighteen as a full time, fully fledged professional dart player. Can you know stay in nicer hotels, drive a nicer car? People say, well. What's that got to do with it? Trust me, as a as a sportsman, everything, your environment, uh, your preparation, uh, the way you feel is everything in any sport. Yeah. Um, which is why I think, as you said, we've got all these players that are coming through that have never even dreamed of earning that kind of money yeah. are, are now going to be, you know, living, living, living their dream and, and affording to be able to do it. Because that's yeah. the thing, you know, back in the day, there was guys that were scratching around constantly, trying to afford to go to tournaments, trying to afford to go to America, to get points, to qualify for the world. But that was it, it was just playing in it. It wasn't, it was all about winning, it wasn't yeah. about the money, where now, you know, they're getting rewarded for their commitment to their sport and, and fair play to them. Perfect, well, thank you very much, Chris. Pleasure, pal, thank great you, to see you as always. That's our third episode of Road to the Palace. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and keep following up the, the updates towards the William Hill World Darts Championship. See you at the Palace.